Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to be OP in Far Cry 6. The other Far Cries uh, have skill trees and you have to acquire the skills, but in this game you get a lot of the skills right from the beginning and some of the skills you're going to get you get from mods and from other things. To enjoy playing this game well you're probably going to do best at using it in a stealth mode and having weapons that are able to do that is going to be a huge bonus. This game is a looter shooter, so you're going to have to run around and collect all the stuff you can find because the components that you're going to use to upgrade your weapons and to be able to buy things like scopes and silencers are going to take certain required elements. You can't manually save the game, and when you see that little symbol up in the right corner, that's when the game is saving. The game has three save game slots, so if you're playing multiple games, you can put them in a different slot, but I think you have to be online in order to enjoy this feature. You can go in the options menu and under gameplay go to the HUD, and you can turn on an outline for the items that you need to pick up. It just makes it easier to see them. Having better guns is really important, so the first thing I do after I get to the first island and I go meet Juan for the first time after I search the town, for everything that I can get is to go get this humidor shotgun in Cordo K and it's in a lighthouse. There's no enemies really around a couple of people and they get a horse in Clara's camp and ride over there and get around the island with a horse mostly or you can grab cars and this way you can get this uh, humidor shotgun which has incendiary rounds which do great at eliminating billboards and taking out enemies and setting them on fire and taking out signs that you have to destroy every time you take a checkpoint. There'll always be a sign there and one blast with the gun and it'll get destroyed, which is a lot cheaper than using explosives. When you see people with little exclamation points above their head, they have intel, so always go over and ask them what they have. You're going to be running out of ammo a lot, so every time you do, if you go to the workbench, your ammo and all your gadgets will be resupplied. In the beginning of the game, you're going to need lots of gunpowder to buy silencers and scopes and other things. And they're going to be at FND boxes. So when you look on your map and you see an FND box, go get it. The Libertad crates are going to have supplies and they're also going to have clothing articles. So when you're at the workbench, it's the only place that you can modify your weapons. You can switch your weapons out in the field at any time, but you'll see that if I want to put armor-piercing rounds in the gun, which I want to put in everything except for the blast rounds that would go on guns that would shoot down helicopters, I'm going to need material gunpowder, recycled fasteners, whatever. And on this gun, I like to get the ACOG early because the ACOG has a four-power scope on it. You can be like a sniper from a distance. My secondary gun is the MS-15, and it uh, is pretty powerful, and with the stock setup you get at the beginning with the uh, suppressor and just putting the scope on it, it becomes a really good assault rifle for doing silent kills. The other nice thing is you don't have to purchase those things twice if you have something in the same class. So if it's a rifle, an ACOG will go on every rifle you own. Depleted uranium is at the anti-aircraft gun sites, so there's one on the first island you do, and when you go get it, then you can upgrade your uh, Supremo. And Juan's going to build you the Supremo, and you want to equip everything in the gadget slot, because those are things you can choose to use while you're using these. But once again, you're going to need gunpowder for this. I buy the Volta Supremo so I can get access to the EMP grenade, which will help take out tanks. And the perception grenade is I use all the time, so that's really important to me. So you can never have too much gunpowder. It's just the way it goes. So transportation and getting to where you want to go. If you go to a call box and call vehicles, your red car is not in there for some strange reason. You can take pictures of cars and they'll be added to your inventory and you can call them. But anywhere that you're near a road in Yara, you can click on the picture of the red car and then hit the R button to call it and it will be delivered to you. And that little blue car is it. Thank you. And then you can drive to wherever it is that you need to go. And when you finish the first island, and you go to the second island, which is Juan's base, or Libertad base, 
if you go up this hill, there's a chopper location, but it's not there the first time you go there. You have to leave Juan's Island and go to the mainland, and then you can fast travel back to Juan's Island, and that baby chopper will be there. And if you just take a picture of it, it'll be available at any place you can call a chopper. So the advantage of the buzzer is that you can fly really low to the ground and you can bump the ground without destroying it. And it has uh, tanks that keep it afloat in water, so if you land it in water, you don't sink. And you can see the little red outline of where it is. I've ID'd where the gun is, and now as long as I drive it close to the ground, I won't get shot down. And I can just drive it right over to where the gun is and then take it out. You'll see it's pretty easy this way, rather than having to sneak all the way in here. And... Once I'm there, I'm using a, a silenced assault rifle to take out the enemies and a perception grenade to ID them. So the perception grenade, when you throw it, it makes every, it's a wall hack and it just IDs everywhere the enemies are. And then you just shoot them one at a time and then destroy the gun and get the uh, depleted uranium. So before I leave the first island, or right afterwards, I'll come back to Clara's camp and take this path, and I'm going to show you how to get the Triada mission going. Even if the, one of the people doesn't tell you where the cave is, this is how you can find it very easily. Just follow this path, go up here, and then you can look across this valley. And you can use the parachute that you get in the first mission on this island to just parachute over to the entrance of the cave. Go in the cave, and you can start the Triada mission, which means you have to go find three idols. And between the red lizard on the wall there and that blue symbol, there's this little marking on the cave. And even if it's not there and you don't see it, it's, that's where it is, right between those two, and just wingsuit over or parachute over. As soon as I leave Juan's Island, the first base I take is this spot, because it has a place where you can call a chopper which makes it very convenient you can fast travel or airdrop from there as soon as I meet the Monteros or the Maximus Montanzas that's the first base of the three then I get the hideout network which gets you a wingsuit and allows you to buy hideouts you want to buy the hideouts except that in the beginning even though you've picked up money from the soldiers and stuff like that you'll never have enough money to buy more than a few of them so in order to get more money, you're going to have to do the Banditos missions. And once you do those, you're, you're going to have some money rolling in and you can buy the rest of the hideouts. And the reason you want hideouts is that you can do an airdrop from the hideouts if there's no anti-aircraft guns around. If there's anti-aircraft guns around, then they won't let you do an airdrop from that location. So at the three main bases and at hideout location, there'll be a Banditos board where you can do Banditos missions. And you get a leader, uh, Benito, at the first uh, island that you do. So you can put him in as a leader, and he has certain skills. A surveyor is one of them. And so you click on one and then do the mission. And the first missions you do, you always want to make pesos because as you get more pesos, you can buy more hideouts. And that's really what you need at the beginning. So always go for the uh, pesos. After this, you can find a location where you can get two more leaders with one mission. So if you look online where you can find it, you can go get those two leaders and then you can do more missions. And Probably after a while you won't be able to do them all without having other leaders that have special skills because the skills have to be associated with what the job is. It'll recommend certain skills are required or helpful and if they have those skills your success rate is going to be much higher and you'll get the reward. You'll also need recruits and if you hijack uh, prison vehicles you'll get the people in the back to become recruits along with people that you save on the side of the road. Also, in the very beginning of the game, as soon as I get to the main islands, I go get the 1911 pistol. It's at the location I'm showing, just uh, northeast of Segunda. And if you go to that area, there's a cave that you have to go into, and then you can find the, you know, do the mission there, and you'll find the 1911. Extremely great gun for taking out enemies at really high levels. The next gun I want to get is the Hi-Fi. It's a custom rifle. It's 40 round mag. It's an assault rifle and it's got blast rounds and it does great at taking out choppers and cars. 
but the and it does really well at taking out enemies also and it's right here in Beecho's place and it's easy to run in and get it before you even get the Beecho mission you just grab it and it'll do the job for you trust me I like to have an LMG with a 100 round mag with blast rounds for taking out choppers and it'll take out quite a few choppers so the NV60 is my favorite and then in the early game also, or, you know, after I get to LS Day, I get the six-round grenade launcher at this location. It's uh, not too hard to get, and uh, there's nobody around here with three soldiers. You take them out. I got a Silence 1911 pistol for doing the job, and you go inside and shoot the lock of the ceiling. Go inside and get the LMG. But before I get the six-round grenade launcher, I usually take out a lot of anti-aircraft bases, so I have a lot of depleted uranium, and I'll get the fireworks launcher and the Resolver weapons, and just watch what this baby can do. I mean, it's a bit, it's just not very accurate, you can't really aim it very well, but it'll take out a truck <laughs> with one shot. So here I am taking out an anti-aircraft uh, cannon area in the Montero region. I threw it perception grenade first and now I'm going to throw a regular grenade just because there are a bunch of guys standing together and it would be quicker that way and now I'm going to use the silence 1911 and you can see how good this gun is at one shot headshots at long range I mean holy crap you can barely see the guy and still taking him out and then I'm just going to throw a grenade although technically I would load uh, sticks of dynamite because you get more dynamite than you do grenades and it does the same thing and if you get really lucky like I did here at an FND box I got the AKM a level 2 weapon and with a silencer and uh, ACOG on it this thing is a beast so the easiest way to do supply drops is to drive the little buzzer over there get in it and then where it, where it tells you you have to go, you can get over there in seconds rather than having to drive all the way over there. Now, of course, if there's a anti-aircraft gun, that's going to be a problem for you. <coughs> but since there aren't any here, it's just easy to drive over. And then take everybody there out because there'll usually be some enemies. Sometimes there won't, but some, most of the time there will. So I'm just going to land it and throw a perception grenade to ID them all. Don't even have a Luso with me. I could summon him if you want if I wanted to bring him and Then I'm using the um, Assault rifle AK with a silencer to take everybody out Although the 1911 would do just as well and you're gonna get as a reward uh, gunpowder and a supremo bond Which are helpful for crafting stuff if you're always looking for the orange smoke That's where the supply drops are and I'll find them on the first island actually so this is why Eluso is the best amigo. Uh, without even asking her to do anything, she just automatically goes in and starts attacking the enemies. Now, if you like to do it all yourself, I guess this is not the ca amigo for you. But you don't even have to tell her to go do it. I mean, if you do tell her to go do it, she'll do whatever you instruct her to do. And then when she does kill them, they disappear. So there's no body to find. They just turn into dust and smoke. I don't know why, but I'm having a little trouble dealing with that flame, or maybe he's too far away to get headshots on, but, I mean, I'm actually hitting him, but... There we go. Now he's down. Look at Elusive just go to town. Isabella is waiting for you. I thought I was never going to see her again. So I'm going to show using the Triata Supremo. Now the best place to be with if you're going to use the Triata is inside something behind cover because they can still shoot, shoot at you and see you. But if you light it up, the, the rifle that you get with it will shoot through walls. doesn't have, matter how many walls. It'll kill guys that are in tanks. So if you have two guys that are in tanks, you can kill both of them with this gun. No problem. But, of course, then the game doesn't like you doing that, so it just spawns more tanks, generally. But, you know, if you've got to kick out about six guys that are left in the base, it's, this is the way to go. 
doing airdrops is a really good way of getting around going quite a ways away from where you have to go. So thanks for watching. I hope it was educational. Thanks.